Jacob Moore joins me now in his first live interview, along with Jacob, his attorney, Ven Johnson. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. This, I know it's nerve wracking um, and it can feel uncomfortable. It can feel uncomfortable for anybody. I think sometimes, especially for young men. Yeah. How difficult is it to speak out about this, Jacob? Um, you know, when all of this kind of started coming out and uh, I didn't really think about myself as really any different, you know? Um, you know, just like how, uh, you know, the other female victims, you know, kind of came out and, you know, told their story. It was, um, you know, I didn't really see myself as any different. Yeah. When did it occur to you that what happened to you was abuse? Um, I was out to lunch with my sister um, and uh, my brother, but uh, when everything started coming out, I kind of remembered that, you know, that uncomfortable feeling I had during one of my treatments. Um, and I started um, researching, you know, uh, you know, chi lines between... Like, is there a connection between right. what he was doing to you with the acupuncture needles and shoulder injury? Right. So I was looking for evidence that there was some sort of, you know, real medical treatment involving, you know, the chi line between my shoulder and, uh, you know, my groin area. And after I found nothing, I was just, like, shocked. How old were you when he was doing this? Yeah, I was 16 years old. And your sister was also seeing him for, quote, treatment. Yes. How old was she? Uh, we were, we've seen him for probably, you know, uh, eight years, years, you know. The thing about Nasser is every one of the victims talks about how he was completely trusted, like yeah. completely trusted. And actually, trust in Nasser was encouraged and fostered by every organization that employed him and sicked him on the young victims. Is that how the, dy the dynamic was for you two? Yeah, um, he had a very strong, you know, uh, prevalent relationship with a lot of the coaches in my gym and uh, a lot of the athletes, um, myself included. He was good friends with my mom. And uh, uh, when my sister retired from the sport, he was the only uh, man that she called to make that decision. So he was a very, you know, he was very, present in He was in our clever. Lives. Yeah. He was clever. I mean, they call it grooming when, you know, these predators go after young kids and sort of make the children fall in love with them in a way, you know, trust them and see them as a nurturer. Um, the... <laughs> now you've decided to sue him. He's in jail. He's going to be in jail for the rest of his right. life. What's the, th the thinking behind that? Um, I hope it never happens again, you know. Like, no one should have to go through this. And so, you know, to kind of come out and you know, try to do the right thing is, you know, that's really important to me. And short of holding him accountable, can you just expand on that, what you just said? Because I'll bet you anything. I mean, I know, I know, as sure as we're sitting here, that there are other young children out there being victimized right now. And that feeling you just said of, I, I knew something felt uncomfortable. Yeah. So, um, it was, uh, it was very uncomfortable being kind of in the room with him, uh, you know, during that uh, that time. And even though you know sometimes things feel uncomfortable, you never really um, you never really know like that something is blatantly wrong, you know. He's a, um, he's a doctor. Yeah, he's a you child. Know. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a doctor, and you're sure. a child. Yeah. And we see this pattern over and over again, then where. <clears throat> these people in positions of authority take advantage of a young child's trust. They manipulate, and that's the thing that we don't maybe all understand, but the sex abuser, these pedophiles, exactly, they infiltrate the family, the community, the coaching. They are literally everything to everybody. They will say and do anything to feed their sickness. Do you think there are other male victims? I know that there are many more victims, female and perhaps male, we know statistically, Megan, I know you know, one out of 10, two out of 10 of the folks come forward. So we have 250 some uh, strong, and I commend all of the, the survivors like Jacob, male and female, for coming forward and standing up, doing the right thing. But we know there's more statistically, and add, multiply that out, it's got to be into the thousands. Just you being here will hopefully release other young men from shame they're feeling. Yeah. Because as you know, victims blame themselves. And they can see somebody as strong and as accomplished as you sitting in this chair, talking openly about it, recognizing it wasn't your fault yeah. at all. So thank you for doing that. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here.
to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.